The headline writes itself, self-proclaimed crime fighter from Queens pretends to have produced a musical about a fictional crime fighter from Queens. The latest in the ever-growing list of George Santos fibs comes from Bloomberg tonight. Apparently, Santos told potential donors in the run-up to his election that he had been a producer <laughs> for the Broadway musical Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. That's according to people familiar with the discussions. Of course, he wasn't involved with the production at all, according to the show's lead producer. It's kind of a weird thing to make up stories about because the show was, quite infamously, a hugely expensive flop. None of this came to light until after he was elected to represent New York's 3rd Congressional District. And in the nearly four weeks since he's actually been in Congress, Santos spends a lot of time running away from reporters, escaping into elevators and behind his closed-door office. We are now getting a glimpse of what happens beyond those doors. Santos arrived with the skeleton staff, and after the first revelations of his many, many fabrications, the investigations into his campaign finances, which are ongoing, it seems no serious professionals with any respectability or long-term career aspirations would go near him. So he had to staff up with people like Vish Bura, seen here with Santos as he runs away from yet another reporter. reporter. Bura was Steve Bannon's podcast producer, a man described by Talking Point's memo as a, quote, veteran MAGA movement provocateur who played a key role in the Hunter Biden laptop saga. He is now the operations director for Congressman George Santos. Here he is in a photo with another prospective Santos hire, Derek Myers. George Santos says his office was in the process of hiring Myers, but decided against it because of concerns about his background. And then, Santos told Semaphore, they found out Myers had secretly re recorded a conversation in his office. Quote, he's violated the trust that we had in him. Talking Points memo re reported that they obtained that audio from Myers, which Myers says came from a meeting with Santos and his chief of staff. At one point, TPM reports, Santos starts talking about leaving hiring decisions to his chief of staff, saying, quote, I trust this guy with everything, and I've obviously effed up and lied to everyone, <laughs> lied to him like I lied to everyone else, and he still forgave me. Joining me now, one of the investigative reporters at Talking Points Memo who obtained this audio and spoke with Derek Myers, Josh Kavinsky. Um, Josh, what is life like behind the closed doors of the George Santos congressional office? Is it a functioning office? Um, well, as far as we can tell, it's extremely chaotic, Chris. Um, I think that what the audio that Myers gave us reveals is the chaos, um, a lot of tensions between the staff, but also that decisions are made in a fairly ad hoc way. You know, Myers, the, the conversation we had, he wasn't even dismissed. He was called in to be questioned about this incident in his past when he was working as a journalist. Um, and Santos and his chief of staff didn't really get around to questioning him about that directly. Instead, they talked about Botox, they talked about weight loss, they talked about Brazilian candies, they talked about cheap ties and where to buy them. They sort of meandered around talking about things that didn't really have anything to do with what was going on in front of them um, as this guy was waiting to decide, to figure out, to find out if he was going to be fired or not. So I think there's that kind of meandering quality to it. There's, this lack, there's that lack of organization. Um, but there's also just a, a dearth of people. Um, you know, this is the congressional staff that uh, has around three or four people, as far as we can tell, employed right now. Um, there is doesn't That's seem to enough, be a district. Just for the record. No. It's like usually like 20, 25 usually on the, on the hill, somewhere in there. Yeah, it's it's usually, yes, it's usually around that size. Um, and so, George, you know, Santos is in there, has been in there for around a month, I suppose. And I mean, he, there's around four people. Um, as far as we can tell from what we heard, uh, they're trying to staff up. Um, but it's difficult given his reputation and the fact that he's become the most notorious guy on Capitol Hill, which is, you know, hard to accomplish. Yeah, I mean, I, I should note, I, we obviously can't vouch for, for Myers or, or, or the recording. Uh, he did tweet today that he filed a police report with Capitol Police and complaint with congressional ethics regarding ethical violations and sexual harassment by Congressman George Santos during my time working in his office. That was a very brief time. We'll see where that complaint goes. Uh, tell us more about Vish Burra, who um, does have a, a, a kind of history in right-wing media. Yeah, so Vish is an interesting guy, and I would encourage you know viewers to read my colleague Hunter Walker's profile of him, which came out last week. Um, but Vish, you know, as you mentioned in the in your intro, he has this background in on the far right. Um, he is a guy who I think self consciously sees himself as a real fighter, as a pugilist, 
He's somebody who sees himself as having fought his way in from the bottom. You know, he comes from Staten Island. He ended up getting involved with the Manhattan Republican, Young Republican Club. And from there, he went on to work for Steve Bannon. He worked on the Hunter Biden laptop um, expose, if you want to call it that. And he ended up working with Matt Gates. And then after Matt Gates, after the uh, FBI and DOJ investigations into Gates's um, alleged uh, sex trafficking, after those went away, um, he ended up working for George Santos. So I think there's another point that's interesting about Burra, which is basically ideological, but it's that, you know, he's, he's a MAGA provocateur, right? And he is sort of like a moth to the flame, but in a specific way where he's kind of going around with politicians who are right-wing politicians who are facing these big scandals. And I think he's serving a purpose that's defensive, but in an interesting way, the intent is partly to draw attention. So in Santos's case, like with Burra, I mean, if you're part of a movement that's dedicated to discrediting American government, to making people think that it's irreparable and run by liars and frauds, then it makes a lot of sense to kind of draw attention to a guy in Congress who is a liar, a self-admitted liar, well, thanks to our recording and a fraud. 